to the regularly scheduled February board meeting. If everyone would please turn off their phones before we get started, I would appreciate it. And then we can all rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Scott, if you would do the honors. Sure. And roll. President Brandsand. Here. Vice President Singer. Here. Treasurer Wasserman is absent. Member Baker. Absent. Absent. Member Frizee. Here. Member Gordon. Here. Okay. All right. We have a quorum. All right. Next is the consent agenda. We have item 2.1, approval of the organizational meeting minutes and regular meeting minutes from January 18th. <coughs> 2.2 is announcing um, staff members who have announced their resignation with the effective dates also listed. 2.3 is administration seeking approval to deliver a purchase order. Um, let's see, as part of providing buildings enhanced access to testing devices for M stuff, so that will be great. Um, 2.4 is the administration recommends the renewal of the food service contract with Chartwells for the 2016-17 school year. And 2.5 is the legal invoice for payment. <coughs> Do I have? I will move we adopt the items listed under the consent agenda 2.1 through 2.5. Right. Do I support? So support. Okay, moved by Scott, supported by Patrick. Is there any discussion? I went to a presentation the other day with Chartwell. I've been really impressed with food, and um, it was great to hear about all the plans they have. And it really is uh, exciting to see the options the kids have at the school lunches now. Thank you. All right. Comment? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Consent agenda passes. Moving on to the Board of Education matters, presentation to the board. Do you want to sure. call them? Sure. I'm, I'm just going to introduce Pam Katz. All right. Come Excellent. up and introduce um, her, her faculty member here and a student, I believe.
kids, it was really cool to get to work with a biologist and an arborist and learn how to do this properly. And, um, well, that's all right. Um, nothing ever goes right in my classroom either. <laughs> um, so, uh, and so, you know, it's kind of cool. The kids will do a group photo and, and they get to meet um, people again in this line of work, which is, that's Bruce Barlow, the biologist out of the DNR field office up there, who's also on the board of directors for the Rough Grouse Society in, in that chapter. And he asked us to do more than we can, actually, unfortunately. And this is where we've been working the last few years. This is the lame duck uh, foot access area which the state is trying to rehabilitate to be more suitable for grouse habitat. And so the kids will then meet somebody who speaks to them about the complexities of managing land um, for a single species while at the same time making it useful for other species. And um, This is the same trip last year working in a different part of the um, uh, grouse enhanced management unit. These were kids that had been with the club since the beginning that graduated last year. And, and while I wish them all well, I miss them. They were fun to have around. and. Um, uh, she's actually studying um, conservation up in the UP now, so it's kind of a cool bridge for her. To, um, and there we are at the end of that trip um, in a different part of the grouse enhanced management area. Um, and then sometimes we'll have guest speakers come into my classroom. And this one was particularly great because in the middle, he told, this is um, Joel Lundberg, who actually just won an award for being the conservation officer of the year, and he's right here in Midland. Um, he came into my classroom and not only kind of spoke to the kids about his career, which was, of course, really interesting, and they loved watching the promotional video he showed and so on, but then he kind of talked about how difficult it is. In, the, in this case, he was um, going to be going to court uh, in one of the state of Michigan's largest posting, uh, excuse me, poaching arrests in the state's history, and so he talked about that, and he kept reiterating to the kids that poaching steals from you all and, and really kind of hammered that message home, and so we enjoyed having him. This is Drew Youngdike. He's a lawyer with MUCC. We've had him into the classroom, and then I speak with him regularly. This was, in many ways, probably the guest speaker we've ever, the best we've ever had because he really talked to the kids about how, when they might go out in the woods to go grouse hunting or they might go fly fishing, that same chunk of state land is also expected to be suitable for mountain biking and mushroom picking and bird watching. And and it's he who has to. He's one of the people that advises the state of Michigan about how to manage that land for everybody's interest. And so that was one. I think the kids kind of got a sense of how complicated that is. Little Forks Outfitters on Main Street has been huge, uh, a huge supporter of the club. We use the classroom up above um, for fly tying classes. We'll have people from Trout Unlimited come in and talk to the kids. And as is always the case, people open their doors and we show up and there's all this stuff for the kids waiting for them and people donate it to use, et cetera. So there we are doing a fly tying class. Um, of course, they had to tie a doubt high fly for me there, and that's in my classroom now. Um, and the other thing that's fun about the club is it gets the kids fired up about Michigan. I, John Osborne and I are friends. He lives in a different part of the state. He's, he's actually a police officer, but he's really involved with the Michigan tie flying community. And he wrote this book, which is sold at Orvis store, stores all over the country. And I, I really like stuff like this because it makes the kids realize you live in a great place to be an outdoors person, and, and this kind of stuff is happening right here in your state. And, I'd like to get John in to speak with us, but it's hard given his distance. Last year, a couple of our kids got a scholarship um, from the Kalamazoo chapter of Trout Unlimited to go to their summer camp on the Osaba River. This is um, Carter and Bo, who went to the camp. And, um, and then another one of our students, this was Nick, was actually an instructor there. He's a junior at Dow High now. He really wanted me to use this picture because he liked <laughs> it. But um, he's pretty dedicated uh, fly fisher. <laughs>
you to learn something that will have you working outside or pursuing these interests? Or would you like to work, spend your whole adult life doing this kind of stuff? As of right now, I uh, want to be a contractor. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit different than contractor, but. Uh, Sean, is uh, Mr. Chambers the brains behind it all, or do the students take a leadership role as well and help decide the direction of the club? I guess some is kind of a newer club, and the team is the head of like the best of stuff. We'll be trying to turn it over more, maybe be more of the time to be. Uh, if we had Andy Kaiser and other members of the club, we'd be trying to do it a little bit better. Mine's okay. on. Oh, you guys, we weren't supposed to do it. No, I turned mine on when you told me to. <laughs>
Okay. Well, we're going to recognize our shining um, stars and boys, and the first one is Don Moultrip. And Don, Don would come up. You have to stand here and listen to all this good stuff I'm going to say about you. So, a little <laughs> bit about uh, her career highlights at MPS. Don earned her bachelor's degree from Albion College in 1991 and her master's degree from Saginaw Valley in 2000. She began her teaching career with Saginaw Public Schools in 1997. Don has been with MPS since 2000. Her MPS career began as a special education teacher at both H.H. Dow High and Midland High Schools. And in 2001, Don taught full-time at Dow High where she has remained ever since. Approximately five years ago, Don moved to teaching English language arts in the regular education program, which is their current assignment. In addition, Don currently serves as the Dow High ELA teacher leader. Don has served as a chair of the MCA Professional Standards Committee for the past few years. As part of this position, Don has done a wonderful job coordinating all aspects, aspects of the Gerstacker Teacher Proficiency Awards as the committee's chairperson. Don was nominated for the Shining Star by an MPS parent. Here are some of their comments. Miss Mo goes above and beyond her normal call of duty to help students. She deeply cares about her students. She not only teaches them to become a good student, but she invests in them so they can become a better person and a leader in their community. She is truly a shining star. Congratulations, Don. Thank you. Congratulations, Don. Thank you. Thank you. Our second shining star is still working, so she can't be with us tonight. So it's Bridget Hockmeyer, and Bridget is in mm -hmm. Charleston, South Carolina. Not a bad place to be right now, but she is there um, working on imp inquiry training for the PYP process. Mm -hmm. So Bridget's not with us tonight. And a little bit about Bridget. Bridget has been with MPS since 1986. Her MPS career began as a sixth grade teacher at Chippewasee Elementary School. She earned her bachelor's degree from Central Michigan University in 1986 and her master's degree from CMU in 1991. In addition to sixth grade, Bridget taught first grade at Chippewasee. In 1999, she moved to Adams Elementary as a fifth grade teacher. In 2008, she moved into a new role, that of the principal of Chippewasee Elementary School. In 2009, she assumed the role of principal of Plymouth Elementary, the position she holds today. Bridget was nominated for the Shining Star by an MPS parent. Here are some of her comments. Our experience with Plymouth has been wonderful. From my son's home room teachers, to the special education teachers, to the office staff, and to especially Mrs. Hockemeyer. We met for this IEP, which was very emotional. Our son was not achieving his goals and was falling behind. Upon receiving the information, it was suggested by Mrs. Hockemeyer that we look at another MPS school because they have a cognitively impaired classroom. I was heartbroken to think that our son was going to have to move to another school. Bridget made an appointment for us to visit the school and volunteered to come with us so she could help in answering the, and asking questions with us. It was decided at the appointment that it was the best interest of our son to move to the new school as soon as possible. I was so happy to have Bridget come with us to this meeting and to know she was there for our child's support. She asked questions and made statements that we as parents couldn't even think of because it was so overwhelming and very emotional. She's a great principal and we will miss her dearly. She cares about her students and went to the extra help to make us feel comfortable with the move. Please honor Bridget for being an excellent principal. She is definitely a shining star in my eyes. So congratulations to Bridget. All right, congratulations Don again and congratulations to Bridget. So. All right, moving on. Board of Education Matters, presentation to the board. First thing, I'm guessing it's you, Bob. Uh, yes, it is. Um, good evening, everybody. And as we get set to go here, I just remind you that uh, budget for a school district certainly is not just a document, but more of a process. And just to kind of remind everybody how that works, uh, we actually started with this budget back in early June um, and worked on it at two board meetings there and then eventually put this forward in June. Um, I want to remind you also that we set this budget before we finished the prior school year. It's just the way it works in the school business. And also before we had audited figures. So it is very common, like we're gonna do tonight, that we would revisit the budget and make a budget adjustment to take the conditions into account that we weren't expecting way back in June, uh, even before we had finished off our final budget from 14, 15. 
So if you look at our timeline here, we're at the uh, middle part there, uh, mid-year budget adjustment here on February 22nd. Um, we'll be doing our workshop on April 18th, and then we have, as you know, we'll be talking about the proposed 16-17 budget on June 13th, and we follow it up a couple weeks later, where not only do we approve a new budget for the next year, but we finalize the budget from the year before. And so that's the timeline we've followed. So a lot will take place in the next four months uh, with a lot of information to come in. But even when we reach June, as you know, it's quite common not to have every piece of information uh, that we want handy for us. Uh, the major factors, I feel like a broken record. It doesn't change much anymore, does it? Uh, I keep bringing up the same things to you, and I think Linda before me is the same. But one of the things that affected the, this budget adjustment is we did have a stable student enrollment, which is something I haven't been able to tell you in the past very much because we've always been losing students. We budgeted to lose 106 students, and we remained relatively unchanged. So our number is very close to what it was last year. Might be a few students ahead of that. We haven't finalized both count days yet. They haven't been audited by the state, but that's, that's very good for us. Not necessarily, I guess, everything I talk about tonight, it, you'll see it as a positive trend, a step in the right direction but I don't want everybody overreacting either. Um, it's a long process, as you know, and it, even as we go out, it's, gonna, it's a matter of years to get stabilized. So I just want to keep that in mind as we see that. But so that was one good thing. It will be the biggest difference in this budget adjustment will be the number of students that we retain. It will be the biggest part of the revenue. Um, there's always volatility in timing and state funding. We're getting much better with the final... in there um, but that money when it comes in it will show up as increased revenue but as you know it gets reserved into the fund balance it's not money we can just spend for anything in the general fund so it'll show up on your general fund as more revenue but it's something that's reserved to spend and as we get the other monies which will come in over a, uh, the rest of this year 17 18 I think uh, 
think it's all done by the end of 18. But we'll have quite a bit of money, if you remember, that total about $3 million. Uh, but that will be money that's reserved, not money even as it sits in fund balance that, that we can just spend for whatever we want to. It's, it's got a purpose behind it. Major expense changes, and they're on both sides, where we had additional expenses and where we had reduction in expenses. Because you see the net at the bottom is 158000 uh, roughly. And of course, what we have as far as reductions of uh, staff related, we always have um, people that have left us that we have a long-term sub for, let's say, or just a difference in uh, someone leaves that's experienced making a certain amount of money, someone younger comes in, and that changes. So just in general, as we look at those across the board, not just in teaching, but in administrative and, and the rest of our staff, uh, you see about 394000 The retirement stipends are interesting. We always had that. If you remember and know that we offered a, one to our teaching staff, um, that does not get paid until 16, 17. And so in actuality, we had too much budgeted there for this year because that won't get paid out. It will be paid out uh, next year. Um, and also, again, there's some changes in the retirement budget to, due to the salaries of the people that are earning and how much they're earning. And that also changes the state funding in a category called 147C. And that amounted to 250000 reduction. On the other side, remember that federal grants coming back the other way. Taxable value changes, we're seeing more of the uh, paybacks. And not, not big tax settlements, but the smaller ones. Lots of people taking in and saying, my primary residence. So a lot of uh, money. It's a fair amount, 30000 that we have to pay back then. But as we go, that, that comes up more and more, it appears, that more people are contesting their, their taxable values and what category it should be in. And more of them are winning those cases. So they're just, it's, it's more uh, volatile in those areas. Uh, that special education building from the ESA is kind of the offset of the revenue that you saw. And then finally, health insurance costs. Um, it's not that they exploded, and we've had a lot, but it's like having two health plans run simultaneously. Remember, we're coming off of a um, self-insured plan, and we're going to a premium-based plan. And when you do that, self-insured, um, there are always costs that are incurred, but they weren't paid. So those still come in heavily more in you know, the first couple months after the plan went up, but they can come in up to a year later. So as we looked at the budget, even though we kind of planned on some of that, it's, it's a guessing game as to how much we need to set aside. But in looking at it, we think we need an additional 500000 there to, to cover that. And that's kind of like a one-year thing, just like if we go back to when the district first becomes self-insured, we saved money for a whole year just based on not having any costs right away as they kind of lag behind. Well, when you get out, it's just the opposite. You kind of pay for it for a little bit. After this, it'll kind of settle itself up, but right now, it's there. So you'll see not much of a net change overall in the expenses. So uh, the general fund snapshot, kind of uh, just to give you uh, the same thing there. The first column, by the way, is the uh, original June budget. Um, and the second column that's in bold there is the um, revised amount that we're doing for this revision. So you can see we revised our revenue up, like I mentioned earlier, by about $1.2 and we adjusted our expenditures up, but that's only by about 158000 If you do those two things together, the biggest thing you'll notice is um, if you compare the shortfall we thought we would have back in June, which was negative $1.6 In other words, when you have a shortfall like that, that's something that you have to go into um, your fund balance for. You'll notice that, that with this budget adjustment, when you approve this tonight, um, you'll see it's down to negative uh, about 570,000, 572 to be exact. And so the next row, if you will, if we get a budget variance, and to be honest with you, we've had at least a 1%. It's more typically uh, two or three. It's hard to know because, you, as you know, I've, I think I talked about this last year, as we tighten our belts with people, there's less variance at the end. But we typically can at least get that 1%, maybe more. And so if you take a 1% variance, in other words, if we don't spend that much money, um, you'll see what the anticipated shortfall is. And actually, I finally get to tell you it's not a shortfall if that goes through. That would actually be a surplus, uh, not a huge one, 229000 uh, um, Could be higher if we get bigger variances. Uh, again, I, I would just caution you. I think that's a positive thing and a step in the right direction. 
You know, we talked about getting to a balanced budget. You got to remember that some of the things, though, as we proposed it, uh, Mike and I earlier, uh, when we started two years ago, almost now, um, part of it is, is we're going to have costs next year, too, like the retirement incentive that's going to be there. So we need to look at it in the big picture. That's all I'm saying is, is don't, it's a great step. It's, it's ahead of where we thought we might be at this point. Um, but there's still, you know, we need to get two or three years like this uh, riding through, uh, and, I, and I think we'll see where we're at. The bottom line always, everyone's interested in it, so if you go down to the bottom, um, I wrote in the audited amount there for the fund balance. Uh, it's really not part of the budget. I, when we were actually guessing what we thought it would be when we did the budget, we were more like 6.7 million. So the actual audited figure at the end of the year, uh, at the end of the 14, 15 year was, was 8.3 million. It was in the fund balance, which is about 10.5% of expenditures. So of course, if we get 229,000 more, it will be up of that and it'll be closer to 10.7. As Bob said, there's some um, things we have to keep in mind. Um, we, we do have the uh, incentive, retire, retirement incentives. We also, in two years, have to grow into teacher steps again because they're delayed at this point. In time. And that's a million dollar growth that in two years from that down the road. And so truth is we're just growing into the budget that we're going to have to have two years from now. And I think it's also um, uh, another point we would make with you is we still don't know how the state's going to fund. I mean, the governor's right. proposal came out a lot nicer than um, uh, what would have, Mike and I both experienced at conferences where they were explaining what's in the school aid fund. Mm -hmm. So if he was not supplementing in some ways, uh, that could be much smaller. And, and remember always, until the state and the house are done playing around with that a little bit, you just don't know where we'll be there. So uh, again, like Mike says, growing into it is really a good way to term that. We look ahead, don't forget, we'll work on, uh, it won't be long, we'll be working on 16, 17 budget. Uh, balancing our budget we did last year where we had everybody come in and kind of explain how they wanted to spend their money. We were pretty successful at that. We'll do that again. Um, student enrollment will be important to us, where the state funding comes in, both foundation allowances and categoricals. Our personnel costs, and that's another thing that Mike just mentioned, but um, again, you know, we, were, we had a lot of concessions from employees that kind of run through the first two years. So again, that's always going to be a factor. Um, it runs about 85 to 86% of our total cost, so it's got to be a factor. Uh, the transfers with the uh, ESA, uh, the Act 18 and the Medicare, and even the enhancement millage, it's uh, kind of interesting. It's kind of a set amount, but there are at least, I think I talked to you a little bit last year about there's uh, some brownfield developments, they're called, and the brownfield developments can capture money. Um, they can't capture our bond. And they can capture our operating, though, and the state reimburses us for that. But the state does not reimburse the ISD for anything that gets captured. So part of our enhancement knowledge gets captured. It's not a great amount yet, but it's just something that affects uh, how much money we're getting there. And of course, always the available fund balance makes a difference uh, as we look forward. Um, like always, we'll put a presentation of this on the website. Uh, we always post the budget. Um, the, it does require a board action tonight in that you have to, and you have a actual physical copy of the budget, uh, same old post online in your board packet. Uh, we need to adopt that as the adjusted 2015-16 budget at this point in time, uh, and that would require a board of the board. And I'd be glad to answer any questions. All right, do you want to do a motion first and then have discussion? All right. Pardon me? All right. Well, I, I need a motion. <laughs> I motion to accept the budget adjustments, item 4.1. All right, Pam. I'll second it. All right, Scott seconds. Now we have some discussion, questions, comments. The only comment I have is you can temper this all you want. It's still great to hear you say surplus mm -hmm. when we have that presentation up there, or even the possibility of one. Instead of looking at negative 1.6, we're looking at maybe putting $200,000 in the bank. You guys did a phenomenal job, Mike, and the rest of the, the board, uh, the rest of the administration. Um, well done. Good job. District-wide. That, that came yeah. district-wide. Yeah. Really and, and I know it's concessions from everybody all together, but it was just a good, good collaborative effort to move in the right direction. And it's nice to sit up here and to see this. and It's refreshing. How important it is not knowing what the future holds and the enrollment will be. And uh, I feel like we're in a good position, and I like the way you say we're growing into that budget. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. I feel cautiously optimistic, mm -hmm. I think is the best mm -hmm. way of phrasing it. Knowing, you know, over the years I've been on the board, all the different factors that go into it and how things can change and how even when we expect, you know, we have certain expectations, how that can get fun on us. Right. So, but definitely cautiously optimistic. And like Scott said, thank you to everyone. Yeah. Everyone in the district who has made concessions to make this happen and done them in a way that has tried to not impact our kids. I think that's the most impressive thing to me is I, I see that all the time. You know, all the concessions that people have to make and all the, you know, financial problems that come along, but um, they never affect, they never seem to affect the quality of education that our kids get. And I'm really proud of our MPS staff for that. I'm just, that's just something I'm very proud of. All right. Thanks, Bob. With that, all in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Bye. Moving on, STEM elementary name. The big Look, unveiling yeah, tonight. Big yeah, this yep. is exciting. Was it leaked earlier? Well, I'm or is sure it is. The big sure unveiling? It is a little bit. So, <laughs> so as you know, we um, took feedback from our student staff and community, and um, we did that in a couple ways. You know, our website, I think through the communique was the other piece. And, and it was pretty obvious um, there were some things that they liked, so this wasn't even close, so it's not controversial in any way. <laughs> Might not have been my first choice, just so you know. So, But it, th these are the names that, it, that was chosen. So it's going to be Central Park Elementary School, the mascot of the explorers, and we have a tagline with it called a STEM e Exploration School. So um, Bart Mel's in the audience. They'll be glad to finally have a name because they keep putting on all their documents, just STEM school. They don't want to have a name. So now, now they have a name to go with their building project. So we're going to ask that you approve all of those in a motion tonight. All right. Do I have a motion to approve the new STEM elementary name? I move approval of agenda item 4.2, the STEM elementary name, Central Park Elementary School. Support. All right. Moved by Yvonne, supported by Pam. Do we have any discussion? I'm excited to have a name, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this would be my first choice. So. Okay. Yep. <laughs> it was pretty obvious it was. For, for I think there's a lot of history yeah. Yeah. in that location and with, you know, potential it's interesting, started as a high school, then it became a, I guess, technically an intermediate school, then a middle school, and now it will be an elementary school on that campus. So fabulous, fabulous location here in Midland, fabulous piece of property, and excited that we have a name now for it. Any other discussion? Will the students choose their colors, or is that? Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that up to the staff and students. Excellent. Look at it. Okay. Good question. They'll enjoy that. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 <coughs> All opposed. All right. Passes five zero. Oh. Next up, we have the STEM Elementary or the Central Park Elementary <laughs> construction <laughs> bids. Go. Yeah. Good job. Daryl, you want to come up and talk about it at all, or do you want me to take the lead on it? Okay. We do have Daryl Darnborough from Burton Mallow here, and um, as you know, we had out for bid, and we closed bids um, about 10 days ago, February 11th, and um, since then they've been tabulated and gone through and post interviews with the contractors to make sure what they bid it on was correct, and um, I think we're pretty happy to say that in here, Low, all of them we accepted the low bid, which isn't always the case. You have different reasons to, to uh, sometimes not do that. All of these, we did accept the low bids, and the contractors are all contractors that Barton Mallow has um, either experience with or great confidence that they can complete them. And, and I'll read the contractors' names, so I don't know if I'll get into all the uh, dollar figures, but just give them a little recognition. In the concrete area, we have Wilbig Construction Company out of Saginaw, Michigan, Masonary. Uh, we have Edgar Botcher, Mason Con Contractors in Bay City, um, Structural Steel, Men of Steel out of Marlette, General Trades, e &L Construction Group out of Flint, Carpentry, we have Wilbig Construction Company out of Saginaw, Roofing, Strung Construction Inc. out of Chesening, um, Aluminum Entrances, Architectural Glazing Systems out of Mount Morris, Painting, Murray Painting Company out of Freeland, Flooring, Flooring Edge Inc. out of Kimball, Fire Suppression, Phantom Fire Protection out of Hale, Mechanical, William E. Walter out of Saginaw, and um, Site Work Fisher Companies out of Midland. Oh, and Electrical. 
Did I skip one? I thought yep, I'd maybe electric. Electric. Yep. William F. Nelson Electric out of Saginaw. So a lot of local contractors, uh, at least spread throughout the area, and probably these local contractors, many, many local employees. Yeah. And so that's, that's a key. Um, that was kind of nice to be able to do as well. Um, the total of the bids is $17,558,000. Um, and that gets us on a much better shape than we originally thought. Yes. Than when, when we were in design phase and thought we were significantly over budget. And so um, this work is going to be done with our Series 1 bond projects, and so we're asking you to approve these contractors tonight. And they're all approved as one package? Correct. Not individually. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion? I move to approve the contractors <coughs> in item 4.3. Support. All right. Move by Pam, support by Scott. <coughs> Do we have some discussion? I, I just wrote a quick comment on my on my notes here. Um, I, I was really happy to see eight out of 13 of those are really local companies. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully um, this $17.5 million is creating some local jobs, uh, if not helping these companies um, continue to grow. So that was really exciting for me to see, and that's what the total number to mention. Yeah, we had um, um, multiple bidders in every category, um, so that was good. We had a lot of interest. In, in, the, in the job itself, uh, as Bart Mel reported, lots and lots of interest in this job, and there's going to be a lot of excited contractors tomorrow. So. W one other question I had. Uh, you had mentioned kind of over the course of this process uh, the word bid savings. Did we see any bid savings in these bids that we've accepted? Well, uh, bid savings over... Um, or how does that over work? Over design, yes. Okay. But we are still slightly over budget um, uh, total, but we're, we're willing to go forward <coughs> that we'll continue to make bid savings up throughout the five or six years of the project, and we'll be okay I know Patrick and I sat through the other night in our FFO meeting. We went through a lot of the different ones, and credit to your organization and to the architect for, um, must have been how detailed your packages were because it did seem like the bids all came in. There weren't a lot of huge swings and um, they had all the information they needed to make sure that they did. on the origin of the program, enrollment... <laughs> ...staff working on a variety of center-based activities during the visit. Uh, our next meeting will be March 14th. Were there two tonight, or just the one? Ah, I do have a second. On January 25th, we met, um, there was a federal programs audit. Brian Burkeen presented results of the recent federal programs audit. The audit 
process began last March and concluded this November with an on-site review from the Michigan Department of Education. Brian shared due, due praise for the staff of Carpenter, Eastlawn, Plymouth, and the curriculum office for their exemplary work. Then we went on to a middle school technology initiative and tour. Dave Dietzik, Chris Sabrin, and Dirk DeBoer facilitated a discussion on the implementation of one-to-one -one computers at Northeast and Jefferson Middle School. Topics included logistics, procedures, curricular impact, and future planning. The discussion was followed by classroom tours with instructors Kelly Wan and Tim Kipmiller. Community members observed devices in use and were afforded the opportunity to interact with students and instructors. All right, that's all we have. Thank you very much. All right, I guess that's the end of that. Moving on to FFO. So I think, Patrick, you said that you have the minutes to read for us. I do. We met February 18th. Um, Angela, myself, Jerry, Mike, and Bob were all there. Uh, as far as the bond update goes, Mr. Dumbrell from Barton Mellor reviewed the progress and timeline on the current central campus work. The committee reviewed the bidding process for the construction of the STEM elementary and the actual bids received and accepted that were presented tonight. For approval. Uh, finance operations. Mr. Cooper and Mr. Sherrill reviewed the following items. Uh, number one, food service contract renewal. Uh, number two, 2015-16 budget adjustment scheduled for February Board of Education meeting. Number three, early information on state funding for 16-17 school year. Number four, status on conversion from self-insured medical to a high deductible health plan with the HSA. And number five, the employment of a new director of fiscal services. Next being scheduled for Monday, March 14th at 5 o'clock. All right, thank you. I think, Bob, are you going yes. to read off our gifts today? Yes, please? I have, uh, first for your information, seven gifts. I wanted to mention, too, have to watch the board meeting. We're now running uh, the donors uh, in their gifts at the end of the board meeting so we don't miss anybody because get by the list anymore because it's a wonderful thing that I don't want to miss anybody when I'm looking at it so you'll get the actual details at the end of the board meeting there but basically we have seven uh, gifts that are for information um, everything from again our Dow Chemical Community Gives uh, amounts you'll see uh, three different organizations taking advantage of those and you'll also see um, some money from some groups we haven't seen before uh, the Midland Chemic Wrestling uh, Association the Contemporary Review Club. Uh, they, of course, have some money from the Midland Area Community Foundation. And also, there's an anonymous donor that gave money to the uh, Midland High Band. So those are for information only. But under 7.3, we do have two items. You could act on these together. It's because of the amount of money they are individually that you have to act on these. Uh, the first one is $5,000 um, being given to the Midland High a robotics club from the first Great Lakes Bay region. And the other one is $5,000 for music supply uh, from the HH Dow uh, High Music Booster Club. Like always, we're very appreciative of these gifts, but the last two, because of their amount, do require your action. All right, do I have a motion? Yes, I will move for the approval uh, collectively of the gifts <laughs> itemized under item 7.3. Support that. All right, moved by Scott, supported by Yvonne. Any discussion? Thank you very much Thank to you. all yes. the donors. Now I'm eating my oranges and grapefruits from the Dow High Music Booster Club right now. <laughs> <laughs> Every year they're so good. So, all right, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. All right, 5 0. Oh. Thank you very much. Moving on, human resources. Scott, do you have uh, some minutes to read for us? I do. Uh, we had a uh, committee meeting on Thursday, February 11th at 4.30 p.m. Uh, present in addition to myself was Lynn Baker, Pam Singer, Mike Shero, and Cynthia Marchese. Uh, we discussed four topics, and very briefly, they include uh, grievances. We were updated um, on an MFP grievance. Uh, as far as negotiations go, we will begin negotiating the 2016-17 salaries for the MFP group. 
Uh, we discussed teacher retirements. Uh, we were informed the committee that 46 teachers submitted their re resignation and retirement letters as part of the early resignation incentive offered in the MCEA master agreement. Uh, we also discussed uh, teachers and job fair recruiting and charging full speed uh, ahead as far as recruiting goes. Um, our next meeting is gonna take place on Thursday, April 14th, 2016 at 4.30 p.m. Excellent, thank you. Bob, are you, who does the? Okay, thank you. We have three uh, former staff members who have passed away we'd like to recognize. Oscar Hahn, who passed away on January 23rd, 2016, is building trades as an education teacher and a football and golf, ball, golf coach for more than 26 years, retired in 1993. Shirley Schofield, who passed away on February 7th, 2016, to the Food Service Department for 19 years, retiring in 1992. And Karen Wyrowski, who passed away on February 4th, 2016, to the bus driver of the Transportation Department for 27 years. Retiring in 2003. All right. Next one as well. Yes. So, item eight point three. We're asking you to uh, recognize that we have uh, forty six. Forty six retirees there. Well, I think a lot of them were last month too, right? This probably isn't of forty six. All right. Okay. I just know when the list comes out, there are going to be a lot of people that are very sad. We're losing a lot of fabulous, wonderful teachers and a lot of years of experience. A lot of people have impacted a lot of children's lives. All right. Next, we have correspondence to you and from the Board of Education. You can read that in the minutes, I'm sure. Uh, letter to the Board of Education, a FOIA request. Um, item 10, scheduled activities. Just to point out, our next meeting will be Monday, March 21st, 2016. And that leads us into hearing from board members. So I will start with Yvonne. Well, I just want to say congratulations to our Shining Stars and to our teachers. And as Angela said, we thank them for the many, many years of great dedicated service to the Middle Public Schools. Shining Stars. Uh, I, I think the highlight um, for me should be tonight uh, congratulating all of our retiring teachers and everybody who was part of this package. Um, I wish them all well and thank them uh, tremendously for all of their service. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. I would echo that as well. Uh, some great memories, great teachers. Uh, one thing I wanted to shout out just a uh, remind people that we have the parent information committee meetings and what great information that we've been getting at those uh, last week it was uh, secure entrances and I know Mike's going to talk a little bit about that but uh, from everything I'm hearing from that group it was uh, really good information 
and I encourage parents to come out if they can to those PIC meetings. I talked to a seventh grader from Northeast today. They went to the Alden B. Dow House, and uh, this particular seventh grader didn't think he was too excited about it at first, but then uh, after he had the opportunity to go there, he was pretty excited about it. It really, uh, it really spurred him on to, to write some good stories. So uh, it's neat to have those opportunities. I talked to a fifth grader over the weekend, um, Sunday, and she, she was apprehensive, excited about next year and thinking about middle school. And um, it's always interesting to me what the kids are excited about. And there's a lot of things um, she's looking forward to uh, moving on to the middle school. Uh, um, we had Dow High's performance I'm going to say Rhapsody, but it's not Rhapsody, it's Ren, Ren Fair. Ren Fair, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ren Fair. And I've seen uh, two different uh, posts on Facebook with YouTube videos. Uh, Drumline, and then the staff had a, a video out there as well. And just great stuff. It was really uh, wonderful to see. It was fun to hear from Mr. Chamber, uh, Chambers tonight and Sean, and I guess the thing that stuck with me the most is it's really neat to have opportunities and programs that you can be a part of, that you're excited about, that you meet good friends. And I heard that from Sean two or three times tonight is how he met such good friends. And uh, if I had one prayer for my kids, it's always that they meet good, good friends. And uh, so all good news, and uh, it's exciting to see what's happening at middle and public schools. All right, and I want to echo on the Conservation Club. The one thing I was thinking tonight when I saw that and knowing with my kids in high school that the way these clubs a lot of times get started is it takes a teacher to be an advisor for these. And I really appreciate that so many teachers step up and will be advisors for kids who want to do just so many different types of opportunities and clubs that we have in our schools, but it takes a teacher to be willing to advise, and I really appreciate that so many of them are willing to do that. Um, let's see, I missed last board meeting because I was traveling, so I want to thank you all for electing me to a president. I appreciate your vote of confidence in that, and um, I know it was not good form to miss the first meeting. Um, and I also wanted, and he's not here tonight, but to thank Jerry for his three years serving as board president. I know longer than, um, I know he would have willingly have given that up probably a year before, <laughs> but really appreciated his, um, all his you know, dedication to that position and his willingness to serve um, for that amount of time. Um, also, at the last meeting, we were all given books, and so I want to thank everyone for um, the book on Malala that was given and also donated to Eastlawn. And I already have been contacted by someone at Eastlawn to say that they got it and they saw my name in it, so that was neat. And actually, on the plane back from China, I was able to watch the I Am Malala um, movie. It was playing on my little screen, so um, got to see that. Yeah, I missed Ren Fair this weekend, but of a family emergency, but I had tickets, so I was sad to miss that, and I've also seen postings on Facebook. Um, last week, I got to go to the Midland Dow Boys Swim Meet. That was really neat, just like they had done in the fall for the girls. They had senior night for both schools um, at the same meet, and to me, that's very special um, to see all the kids been more special this year because my son was a senior. But um, also, everyone hopefully has seen the all school or our schools that came out. A lot of good information in this. I know we got it in the paper, um, Midland Daily News. So I appreciate that. And um, think that that is about all I have tonight. Thank you. I will turn it over to you, Mike. Just a couple of things, quick. Um, I wanted to let you know last week during professional development, um, we worked with a gentleman named Tom, Tom Meinsberger. I think I spoke to you before. Is, uh, represents critical incident management training, between schools, and uh, particularly in our, our area, Saginaw Bay, Middle County, on uh, critical incidents, incidents. And uh, he's trained our administrative staff a few months ago, and now he's trained all of our teachers. And so we had um, an elementary group in the, in the morning session, and then uh, followed up with a secondary group after. Thought it went reasonably well, good feedback from the teachers. Um, a lot of training, but was still a lot of things we have to implement from that training. And so our, our goal is to take our present plans and align them with Tom's um, over um, the next six months and then open school in, in the fall completely ready. Um, follow that up with a little bit of um, some changes in our buildings as, uh, as well, some numbering of our doors and some other procedures so that we can have there. Mm. And um, then follow the next fall that we'll have secure entrances by the time we open in, in, in August of 2017. 
training isn't just for your building, it's also we'll, we'll at some point train our bus drivers and playgrounds and, and all the support staff as well at mm -hmm. points as we go. So Tom will continue to work with us over a number of years to continue our training and updating us. If there was an incident, Tom would be here with the chief of police and the, and the two of them would work together. It's, um, one of the powers of his training is that this is a multi-county and we're all following it. And so if we had an incident, most likely multiple counties would be responding and they're all on the same page as we go forward. Um, we closed last Friday on the Northwood purchase of mm -hmm. that property on the back of Dow High. So that is closed with all the parameters that you had approved last mm -hmm. month. So it's officially done and we received payment and Bob's deposited somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Spoke on the teacher retirement tonight. You want to recognize that um, that's a lot of history and a lot of great teachers out the door. So I want to know, as Scott mentioned in, in the you know, minutes, that we are busy, busy, busy getting ready to recruit just as dynamic young teachers as we can to fill those slots. And so um, we're signed up for I think like a dozen job fairs, and um, our HR department has going to hold a job fair on site as well. Um, we're traveling to uh, as far as Ohio and as far to the, as the UP. And this very instance says, I get to go to the UP. I, I kind of like going up there <laughs> and, and, and there to the northern to recruit some teachers as well. So um, we're looking forward to that. They will bring significant savings short term for us. Um, if you recall in the agreement that we agreed, um, there is a, a retirement incentive in there of about $20,000 each. Um, but they don't get that paid until June of 2017. And so that by that point in time, we'll accumulate that savings and more in order to pay that cash flow out so there'll be no uh, drawdown on our cash flow to do that. We have hired a bit new business director, so we were very sad to lose Carol Ox, and um, I think Carol's been gone a little over a week, and, and we've kind of missed not having a business director. I think Bob's um, been, been a little bit on, on his toes lately and trying to figure out, I mean, you know, last Friday we were all worried if Bob did it right that we were going to get paid. We're very happy about all of that. Um, but we did hire um, Lori Holdery. Um, I happened to work with Lori in Algonac. Lori's been the business manager 17 years in both Algonac and Slate Kirk County Risa. So she's got ISD as well as local experience. And I think we uh, were very fortunate to get someone with that much experience. We had um, so approximately seven candidates um, apply. We interviewed three and we had the vast amount of experience that were there. We were draw, I think, but mainly because our family's from the Michigan, so we were kind of lucky there. We might not have drawn in most of that experienced candidate typically. Um, so we're, I think we're in good shape. She starts next Monday, <laughs> I believe, or Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> She's going to work part of a week and then uh, report back and finish her duties behind and then come back again to us going forward. So it's a good way to get her started going. So welcome to board one. That's, That's all I have. All right, thank you. Is there anything else? All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody.